would you share some of the things that you've been involved in, and then we'll go back and talk about how you got there. I um, was really blessed in 2008. Um, Maureen Brennan, who was the director of CTE, invited me to, encouraged me to write a play. And I wrote a play about my late French Giselle, right. who was a Parisian who lived in Acadia over 60 years, and I had a Parisian stop club in downtown Lafayette called Chez Giselle. So I wrote a play, not thinking too much, and she says, well, there's a theater festival apply, so I did. It was juried in. And the play was the tip of the iceberg of my That's, that's how you got your foot in today. the door and it zoomed in. Yeah, I've, I've probably had at least six or seven productions now at CTE. And for a playwright to have this opportunity in Lafayette, well, it's not only rare in Lafayette, but it's rare in the entire country because there are playwrights that write plays all over the country and never get their work produced. That's not right. We need to do something about that. What do you think we can do, Dennis? Well... What can we play? What part can we play? CT Desart is open to playwrights. They've produced plays uh, from playwrights from other states and other countries. And um, it's growing a little bit in that direction. I would like to see it grow more, have a playwright exchange from different parts of the United States and the world. What all goes on there? Is it people and actors and actresses? And I mean, are you networking with like the same people all the time or different people are finding out what's going on? Um, my question is, what all takes place there? I mean, we, I've been, you know, one time, you know, whenever I got the opportunity to see part of a play, then emergency came up and I had to leave. So I still need to go see that play. <laughs> Didn't you just finish? I'll just finish something there. I had a production of a play called Finding Nelson Mandela. That's right. That we were provided space to rehearse every night. That's rare because sometimes you have to rent your rehearsal space. But Cite produced the play, and I was paid royalties, and the play ran for two that weeks. That was amazing. In August and September, and it was enthusiastically received. It was fun. Charlie well, when Hulk I bring your name up, a lot of people know your name, and it's associated with the plays, you know? Yeah, they not only have given me the opportunity to I ran a writers group there for several years called Confederacy of Writers. Oh, and look at you. How <laughs> about that? Wow. And writers met there to uh, read their works in progress. And I started writing a book through CITE about the subject Giselle, Gigi. And one book became two, and those were published by U.L. Press this year. Wow. You know, Dennis, uh, um, Katie Anna, he was on here, I don't know, two or three weeks ago maybe, and he had some guests on the show doing his trial of becoming a show host, and he did fantastic. He looked professional already because he's had the experience. Good. But the people that were here with you were part of the CETE, and they were excited to hear that you were going to be doing something to help people be aware I, th I am constantly amazed that people don't know about this community arts center. If you are a patron, if you are an artist, you can hang your artwork. They have a gallery. If you are a writer, a playwright, they will help you dramaturge your play and maybe get it produced. Wow. So there's so many opportunities. There's acting classes. I took in acting classes through Lauren Riley Elliott Theater Company there this summer. And I probably learned more about playwriting from that class really? by studying the emotions and the intention of playing an actor on the stage. And it helped me as a playwright. That sounds something, that sounds so 
amazing and interesting. And as you're talking, I'm thinking, in your upcoming show, maybe you could bring in somebody, show their art, if you're talking about the art, some of the things happening there. Showcase and feature other people. You know, that's what we're out here about, is just let people know what's going on. And you've got a whole lot. You, you would not have trouble having guests on your show. You could go down to one guest and not three or four all the time. And, but you've got a lot of areas there already. Uh, like you mentioned, the acting. I just heard about that. You mentioned it, but somebody else told me that also. Hmm. I'm not interested, but other people are. Cite also offers class in dance and Irish dance and children's programs in the summer. And it's just amazing what they do under one roof. I don't think we have the web page up there, but maybe we ought to give it up there. We ought to verbally say if people would like to know what's going on. Citedesart.org. It's C-I-T-E-D-E-S-A-R-T-S dot O-R-G. And they would be able to tell you the different things that are being offered there and the right. hours? You can go on their websites and see upcoming plays. Yeah. They have two stages. And the main stage... I didn't is, know that. Yeah. Is um, where they primarily have uh, longer running plays. And a second stage that has maybe just one night events and okay. like Boom Boom Burlesque. Now I remember, yes. Has performed yes. their uh, weekend only plays and it's less in cost. Either theater is not expensive to produce your own work and compared to what might... Tennis went up. I have, I'm involved with a lot, a lot of writers and inspiring wannabe playwriters. So you're saying that these people can actually possibly perform their own play what they over need there? To do they need to get all that info. Is contact uh, Dad, Danny Ladnerol, who is the program director at CTA. The number would be 337 291 1122. Call Danny at City Desire. Schedule an appointment. He will take your work and maybe get some actors together. Oh, amazing. And have a reading of your work and dramaturgia and get it ready. And then he will maybe even shop for a director for you. Well, that's one good resource to get information. Perhaps in the future, Dennis, maybe we could get that information and share it on YouTube, Facebook, and everything. And AOC, right. and let people know because you're giving me a lot of information. I'm thinking, that's great. When you go attend one of those writer guild meetings, that's the kind of information people okay. are looking for. Yeah, uh, resources, a... resources, and you have the experience and the connection. Well, Cite considers me their poster child <laughs> yeah. over the years. I've... I guess so, because and... I mentioned your name and. Everybody seems to know it, so. Um, I love the place, and I have a passion for the place that exceeds um, just any normal <laughs> <laughs> you level. You really of, love it, huh? Yeah. yeah. You know what, Dennis, seriously, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, oh, my gosh, there was a time I wanted to attend all these plays, and then life got in the way and other things, but now I'm free. I told you that. I really wanted to start attending some of these plays. Let's mention some of the plays that have been there recently. Yeah, The Crucible was directed by a new company called the Cypress Knee Company, theater company. And Aaron Chasen was in the lead. Alicia Chasen directed their husband and wife. Okay. These are professional people that had a cast of over 30. The set was amazing. Mm. This Arthur Miller play would usually be in a theater in New York or Atlanta, wow. but we did it at Lafayette's Little City of Desire, wow. and it was amazing. I attended the Lauren Riley Elliott production of A Streetcar Named Desire. Oh my gosh, the performance by the two leads Catherine, what 
Whitmore and Andrew Lee Vincent were amazing. Catherine's performance was comparable to Vivian Lee in the original wow. movie. She would have won an Oscar had she been in, in a movie. Amazing, it, yes. It, and I talked to her after the performance and she was just drained. She said, every performance I put every cell of my being into my acting and it was apparent. You know, in the past we have tried, believe it or not, to get so many people from there to come here, but their schedules were so full. And now here you are, in the middle of all of it, and it looks like you're gonna be able to bring a lot to this, this venue. Well, thanks to your gracious invitation. Well, you were too interesting. I couldn't keep having you come back and try to tell a story when you yourself are the story, really. You're connected, so I'm excited to be a part of this. And I would like to somehow get everything I can info so that I can share it verbally with others. I really am serious. As of today, I, I would love to do a show that showcases the arts, visual arts, theater arts, literary arts, and maybe even culinary arts down the road. Well, we have the place right here that we it do. can be done. Um, Unless you have a kitchen at Satayto Arts, and then <laughs> we could go out there and film it. The culinary I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, we do have some limits here. We could have some food. We right? have to pre-cook it first, and then we pretend, hey, look at this. It is cooked, but we can do it. There is so much going on here mm -hmm. that is at a level that is just astounding that a lot of people have come back to Lafayette. They had roots in Lafayette, Acadiana, and they may have been in Los Angeles or mm -hmm. New York, but they came back like Cypress Knee, the Chasens. They came back after 20 years and now are doing professional grade theater. And we are so lucky to have it. In Lafayette, I can't, of course, I, when I first started going to plays at Cité des Arts, there might have been 20 who attended them. And Sunday's performance was full, it was packed. And that, I'm seeing that more and more. More and more. That the word is getting out that this is going to the next level. Now you're telling part of my story because I have no idea. Some, a lot of the guests that come on the show, I do what research I can. I mainly let them come and share their vision or if I've had them as a guest and I want them to share or if maybe entice them to have their own television show. Dennis, it's amazing that, like I'm sitting here listening to you, or I am, but I'm also thinking, well, that's another candidate for this book called Acadian, so Acadian Celebrities. People who go out, make a big name for themselves, they come back to this little old town, and then they do all this fantastic stuff that's the kind of people that my friend is actually has a book that will be released soon, and I had mentioned you in it. I had mentioned you to be contacted, but I hadn't got to tell you yet. Guess what? No, this, <laughs> this is the first I've heard of it. First time you heard of it, but I'm letting, I will share that with you, but that is my heart. Is I'm agreeing with you and confirming what you just said. It's amazing, anywhere from authors to movie producers to actresses and actors. It's amazing, not just food. We're not just known for food. It's amazing. The visual arts, too. Um, yeah. We have incredible visual artists that um, Sean Major. Renowned. Yeah. yeah. Is n n not only nationally known, internationally known. Right. Francis Pavi, Kelly Gilbo. Um, you know, I could name dozens. Well, that's some of those people you need to put on your new show yeah. and showcase their arts and their visuals or whatever. Uh, but that's what it's all about. That's what your new show is going to be about, uh, bringing what is here to camera to share with the people. I hope people will contact me if they have a strong interest in marketing their book, their new art gallery exhibit, a show, a theater performance, contact me through DennisWardAuthor.com and 
Uh, You'd be willing to put them on that right path or give them the correct right. resources? Uh, we, once we tape a show here, it's not only on the Acadia and Alvin channel. That's right. But we do uh, Facebook and YouTube, and they can use that as a marketing tool. Oh, yes, I'm excited about that. And that's why I'm so grateful for AOC. And I love to give, you know, uh, acknowledgement to AOC that lets us share our dreams and then lets us take the same video after we hand it in to AOC and share it with whoever we want and give it to the guests and they can do whatever they want. It's a win-win networking situation, freedom of speech, uh, material that would cost you in the thousands if you had to pay. Yeah, the production. And you know, people don't believe that, but it's true. I asked another person, even though I was at AOC and was part of another production thing that was brought to AOC, I asked, is it true that 26 minutes will cost you over $1,000 or more? And he went, yep, it's true, because he worked for another company, television company. And so it's a win-win situation, you know. And we get to bring wonderful news to the local community. This is five parishes, so yeah. You know, yeah. we do what we can. I mean, it's going to be a work in progress, and I'm kind of letting it unfold who I meet. Um, I'm, I met a wonderful children's author, Denise Gallagher, who agreed to be on the show. She's a graphics artist and a children's You're author. You're gathering all those people I couldn't even <laughs> probably touch. That's awesome. She's a UL, author, UL Press author and wow, a rising star in the literary world here. We just amped up. <laughs> we were moving on up, literally, seriously. That is uh, amazing news, and you tr it's true. You may be somewhere with no intentions of even talking about what you're doing, a show, and all of a sudden someone interesting, like, just can't stop it. you got to go up and say, hey, you know, I'm doing this. And someone asked me one time how I got a certain person to come here. I said, I just asked them, but I guess because I worked with them many years ago. But they said, well, they turned down everybody else. Why, why did this person come on your show? And I remember one particular thing, and when he, when this person walked up, and I won't name names, but it was amazing because uh, the staff wanted to know, especially you know the administrator, how in the world did you get him to come on this show? We tried to get him on, he wouldn't come on. I said we worked together way back before he became who he is today. <laughs> but it was amazing because you never know, you know. Um, I went to school with a lady that did fantastic hair, but had the best voice ever to sing country. And she and I, you know, went to music school together. She's a well-known lady French singing accordionist. And she said, we tried to get her, why do you want to sing French and play the accordion? Well, you're so good at country. She said, because that's what I want to do. And she's hung in there. And, and uh, Cheryl Cormier? Oh, she oh well, thank you so much for not listening to some of us, <laughs> a lot of us, because she's well-known everywhere else. Right. And uh, she's out there at every event local she can. Giving back, and that's what it's all about. It is. You know, you giving back, just like, I don't know what you discussed at the Writers Guild of Acadiana, but I did hear somebody come up and was talking to somebody else, and they wanted to go personally thank you for whatever information you had shared with them. You see, just connecting people or hearing something is, you know, just think what's going to happen at the Festival of Words, author sale, and at the Author Alley sale coming up at the South Regional Library, networking. I've been very blessed uh, with my plays and books, and I definitely want to pay it forward. And this has given it me is. the opportunity. I was a visual artist for 12 years. I did um, sculptural mass in fired clay and glazed them. And that was taken away from me because of a tremor situation with my hands. I couldn't work with my hands and do the fine painting. I understand. And I was looking for an opportunity and writing came to me. And oh my gosh, I can't even believe <laughs> 10 years later that I'm sitting here. Well, I come from a long, we just never know. But see, seasons may be over for the can also not be over but change. And I never thought that I'd be have this opportunity to sit at a desk platform like this and have other people come in and tell their stories. See, I'm from a family grandmother. It was the best storyteller ever. 
and we just have a family of storytellers. And I began to tell stories and finally got to the point I started writing them. Then I was writing the stories and it got to the point I, it was amazing. Then someone said, you ought to go on TV and tell your stories. And to really cut that story way down, I marched into AOC thinking that I was going to sit in front of this camera and do nothing but read you my stories. <laughs> and then out of the blue, I started meeting amazing people that wanted to do this and that, but can't afford to do this and that. And I began to ask questions at AOC, and then it changed from me coming in for me, and I started covering all kinds of not, re not recorded musical artists, which I've been doing since 1995, outside organizing concerts, to bringing them to television giving them that free airtime, and they use it as a marketing tool. And then it got to a point where people's stories were so awesome, I thought, well, let's forget just the music. Let's just do it all. Now, who am I going to come? Who's going to come? Forget it. Whoever I meet and they have a story, they need to be here. And that's what Louisiana Heartbeats is about. And you had a story. You shared your story in a book, and now you're going to share how to go about encouraging other people to follow their passion, I think is what it is, huh? Um, yeah. S Encouragement. Sita Dizar, definitely Maureen Brennan opened the door, and the program directors during the year has been Cheryl Castile, who now works for the State Arts in Baton Rouge, Christy Lecte for many years, who directed uh, one of my plays twice, and now is a theater professor, teacher for St. Martin Parish Schools. And now Danny Ladmerel, who's directed a play of mine and continually supports and backs me up, so. Well, goodness gracious, we're having fun. It again. is, more now, two minutes left, two minutes left. Katie Anna, I, I'm gonna ask Dan, uh, you know what, Dennis, what would be some of the people that you would like to showcase in the future? Maybe they're out there listening right now. What are some of the genres that you do plan? You don't have to name names or anything. No. Um, to invite you to come on the show if you're interested in being on Dennis Ford's show in the future, <laughs> or even this show. Andrew, Andrew Lee Vinson has agreed to, he's directing a new powerhouse play called In Town. And he's casting right now for oh. it. And he's going to uh, produce that sometime in February. So we'll get him on the show. Definitely. It's going to be amazing, amazing. And uh, Sher Cohen, we, we, Sheree Cohen, we, we want to get back. And, but that there's so many people in the arts. I mean, if you are an artist and want to be promoted, contact me. Well, I tell you what, uh, time rolls real fast, and we did a whole lot of information, and there's a whole lot more, and there's no certain time that you, as many guests as you have, that's how long you're going to have your show, or if you don't have a guest, you pull in someone and you do a show and talk about, encourage people. Right now, the rolling credits are rolling, and that means <laughs> we're getting to the end of another wonderful show. I want to thank you for coming on basically to sit here and share about what Thank we had talked about. This opportunity, City. You're, you're very welcome. You're a treasure to this community. And you are too, and you will be. And according to that, the show's over. Thank you so much, and can't wait to hear your new show. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we covered it all, didn't we? <laughs> we did. <laughs>